hey guys. So I just got out of work. Excuse the wet hair. I just got out of the shower. But I did manage to keep my makeup on. It's, it's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive skills. So I kept that on. But I'll wash my face after this. But anyway, so tonight, I, I, I'll be very honest with you guys. I had kind of a rough day. Um, so I decided I'm going to make two dishes that are kind of comfort food, which you're going to think that they're really strange that they're comfort food for me. Uh, but they're dishes that when I'm having a bad day, I really want. Um, so I'm just being, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. It just mentally was a draining day. But I'm going to show you the ingredients that we're going to use and what dishes we're going to make. So one of my staple dishes is butternut squash soup. I absolutely love it. I don't know, just having a nice warm bowl of soup um, this time of year is just really nice because it did snow today even though it's April. So I just have some butternut squash, um, onion, carrots, uh, a little bit of thyme, a little chicken stock. Um, I'm going to use some sherry vinegar and I'm going to top it with some really heavily black peppered because um, like cracked black pepper goes really well with butternut squash, croutons, and then um, some fresh Granny Smith apple. So that's one of my favorite dishes. It doesn't take too long. I bought the cleaned and cut butternut squash. You can certainly hack your own butternut squash if you want, but I don't know. It's easier. And then uh, just a caprese salad, something really simple. Uh, I'm actually going to put arugula with it too. I left that in the fridge, but just some burrata cheese, which I'll cut into that. It's uh, like a mozzarella ball with a really, really rich like cream inside of it. It's so good. Of course, you know, it wouldn't be in my own vlog without sugar bomb and tomatoes. Just some basil and balsamic vinegar. So, you know, rough day, but we're going to make some food that makes me happy. So the first thing we're going to do is work on that butternut squash soup because that's what's going to take the longest. So. All right, so what I did is I cut up um, about like a third of that bag, well, probably about a quarter of that bag of baby ca uh, carrots and half of that um, Spanish onion. So I have my pan heating up right now. We're gonna add um, about a tablespoon of olive oil and I'll make sure to give you guys all the measurements um, like I did for which video? The, the pasta video and I'm gonna continue to do that just so you guys have that as a reference. But we're gonna sweat these down a little bit. <clears throat> just get them, the onions really just translucent and just to help develop some flavor. Then we'll add our thyme in near the end. Um, we're gonna just add a full sprig of thyme. We'll take it out, it'll be easier just to remove it um, on the stem um, later. And then we'll add our butternut squash, kind of caramelize it a little bit, and then our chicken stock. All right, so we have our carrots and onions. I just added this in here. I have the pan at about um, a medium high heat, and we're just gonna let this sweat down, probably a few minutes. Um, and then I want to let you guys know that I did preheat the oven to 375 because we're going to use that for our croutons, which I'll show you guys how to make in a moment. But I just want to get the soup working because um, obviously the butternut squash is going to have to cook all the way and we want to develop some flavor. So this is looking pretty tasty. Oh yeah. But we'll just let this cook down. Alright, that's looking nice. So we're going to add that thyme right in there. Okay. Just kind of mix that around. We'll just let that cook for about a minute with the thyme in there. It's going to help. Just heating up the herb itself is going to bring some of the oils out and develop the flavor. And then we're going to add about, uh, let's say, maybe half this container of butternut squash because I'm only cooking a quart of soup. Um, so I'm not going to use all of this or it'll be too thick. All right, so we have our butternut squash in here. And if you guys want, there's a variation where you could go ahead and roast the squash ahead of time. Um, I'm making this soup kind of quick um, because I just want to eat it. It's going to be really good. Um, but if you wanted that roasted flavor, you can certainly do that. I'm just going to coat this a little bit in that oil, but we're really going to add the stock pretty shortly um, and just let it come to a simmer. And then, you know, we're going to wait till the squash is nice and cooked all the way. As you can see, these are not the most even cuts. Um, if you were cutting this yourself, you could certainly cut this smaller and speed up the process. But you know what? It's all right. We're, we got to make other ingredients, <laughs> our other ingredients for our dish. We got to cut some apples, some tomatoes, and some croutons, so I'm not worried about it. All right, that's looking good. We're just going to go ahead and add our entire container of stock. All right. So we're going to let this come to a simmer. And once the squash is fully cooked, we will season this um, with a little bit of vinegar, some salt, of course vinegar. <laughs> um, and we'll finish it with a little bit of butter after we blend it. So um, we'll check back. So ideally, it would be better to use stale bread for this, but this is what I have, and this is what they had at the stores. 
they had a half loaf, so I figured why not. It's just a plain Italian bread. So we're going to cut this up into little crouton size um, cubes, <laughs> I think that's what you call them, um, and just toss it with some salt, pepper, and olive oil. So I'll cut this up and then show you guys. Alright, so we have our bite-sized pieces right there. Looks good. So we're just going to add some olive oil, of course, wouldn't be a Caitlin dish without it. <laughs> um, and then some salt, and then I'm going to add a generous amount of black pepper, but I need two hands. To all right, so we got a nice black pepper, olive oil, salt, and pepper. We're going to pop this in our 375 degree oven for, well, check them in about five to seven minutes. They're pretty small. We don't want to burn them, but we want them to be pretty dried out because they're going to be going into a liquid. All right, so while our soup is working, we are going to have these amazing, delicious sugar bomb tomatoes. Probably my favorite ingredient ever. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> so we're just going to cut those up. What is on my sweatshirt? It's gone? Okay. Um, we're going to cut these up and marinate them in some olive oil and balsamic vinegar. All right, so we have our tomatoes all halved, and now we're going to add our oil and vinegar. As you know, I'm very generous with vinegar. Yeah, that looks good. Keep going. Why not? It's balsamic, it's not too acidic. Um, and then we're going to add our olive oil. So do that. Perfect. And then some salt. Looks good. And we'll let that just mix together. It'll be really good. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is a fine brunoise, which just means a really fancy name for a really small dice. This Granny Smith apple right here. You can do a sweeter apple, but as we've talked about before, I really like these because they're nice and crisp. Which, the butternut squash is really sweet, so I think this is a good pairing. And we're going to make sure that we put this in water with some lemon juice so the apple doesn't turn. So we have our apples cut. We have our tomatoes all ready. We'll cut the basil last minute. We're going to need to grab this ingredient right here, the best thing ever. Deegan's just begging for apples that I dropped on the ground. He's very happy. <laughs> um, but our soup is, uh, our butternut squash is fully cooked. You know, I did this pretty sweet move where I just dunked my knife in there. I wouldn't recommend doing that. That's probably how I chip my knife. Just kidding. I dropped it. Uh, but we're going to put this in our blender. Don't forget to take your time out. Make time for it. <laughs> Sorry. One thing I wanted to tell you guys too with this soup is don't overcook your squash. You want it to be tender, but you don't want it to be completely falling apart or it'll create a really gritty soup. I, I don't, it just does. Um, but just a little tip, a little tip there. Sorry for my hair being wet. It's uncomfortable. But anyway, so we have our, our soup in here right now. Um, so we're just going to blend this up. So I just added the soup back to the pot, but I wanted to show you guys how nice and like it's not too thick, but see it's like got a nice thickness to it. Looks really good. That's exactly the texture you want. Hold on, this is fogging up the lens. Just one second. Yeah, that looks really good. So we're going to season it with some salt, some black pepper, and some sherry vinegar. And then our croutons are out of the oven. We just pretty much got a plate, guys, and uh, we're, al we're almost there. Alright, so I added our salt, our sherry vinegar, our pepper, and we're going to add about a tablespoon of butter in there. I don't add any cream to this. You, a lot of people will put cream in their butternut squash soup. I just personally think it doesn't need it. Um, and I usually, I'll be real with you, I usually don't put butter in this, but I had a bad day. So, butter makes me happy. So that looks really good. We'll plate that up. So we're going to top it with these croutons right here and those apples. But really quick, I want to show you um, the burrata. For a caprese salad, I have some arugula as the base. I just like it. It's not traditional by any means. Um, Alright, so this is what the burrata looks like. So it's kind of squishy. Kind of looks like that poached egg we did the other day. But I'm going to try to cut into this while holding the camera. Let's see. Alright, look at that. Oh my god, there's a dog hair in there. That's good. Look at that. Oh my god, that looks so good. I'm only gonna eat half of this because that's a lot of cheese. But, oh yes. Alright, there's our salad. It's nothing like super special, but looks pretty good. I just topped some more of that balsamic on there. And we got our cheese, our tomatoes, and some basil. And then we got our soup. It's got the croutons and those apples in there. Those are some pretty rough cuts of apples. But yeah, that's my dinner for tonight. I don't know, a little bit comfort food meal. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm gonna go eat it because I'm starving. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That it, Those are really my two favorite things to eat besides probably chorizo and candy. But um, I really needed that today. Wasn't It just wasn't a good day. I don't know if you guys can relate to that. Um, sometimes you're just not in it for the day and work's challenging and you're just not mentally there and that's that's okay, but that's why food's awesome. It can really just uplift your mood. I feel um, 10 times better um, compared to where I was before. And kind of the energy of cooking it and coming up with something really helps because it's creative and 
you know, it's better than just ordering a pizza or something like that. That's the easier choice and I love pizza. But, you know, taking that time to really just talk about the food and put some, you know, love into what you are eating, that really helped. So, um, I was going to get some sour beers and I was down in the, pier the beer aisle and I was, you know, thinking of the flavor profiles I wanted. Sour, of course, and really sweet. And I'm looking at these $14 beers and couldn't really decide, but I want to show you what I decided on. Hold on. Oh yeah, orange juice and Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> so I have to work tomorrow and I didn't want to have, you know, a bad headache going into work. So I got, I'll probably have a sugar headache, that's for sure. But I decided to get some orange juice and Sour Patch Kids because I realized I didn't really want beer. I just wanted sugar. Is that okay? There were some good beers, but I promise that we'll try some more, but it's not for me every night. I'm not a huge drinker. I probably have maybe one every other day, as you guys have seen. Um, but let, let me know if there's something you want me to try just so I can taste test it for you guys before you invest, you know, like $14 in some of those four packs. It's a little pricey and it's a risk. Um, so let me know if there's a, like a local brewery in upstate New York that you guys want to know, or even if it's like Dogfish Head or one of the bigger breweries, let me know. Um, but thanks for bearing with me tonight, guys. You know, my wet hair, my makeup from work. <laughs> sorry the battery died there. I think I was saying sorry for, you know, kind of a more somber mood that I was in tonight. Sometimes you have a bad day at work. That's okay. Sometimes mentally you're not there. That's okay. But doing something creative, making food like that, it, it really helped a lot. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see, whether it's a dish that you want cooked. I'm going to definitely take your um, the options that I talked about last video, the short ribs, uh, spaghettios. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> mac and cheese. Definitely going to do probably mac and cheese soon. Um, I'm going to make those things. Um, Sunday, I'm going to make that school bread that I was talking about from Disney, uh, the coconut and like the yeast roll. Um, but tomorrow I might make that mac and cheese, depending on how good or bad my day is. Uh, I mean, it'll help either way. But thanks for watching, guys. Um, have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. And don't forget to click subscribe. Have a good one.